Welcome to the Cinescape Podcast. We're changing landscape of movie and TV news and reviews. Happy Memorial Day weekend 2018, everybody. I am your host, as always, Sean Harrigan, joined by Bill Rowdy Rowdy Tazi. Woo! Mike, the former Cinescape trivia champ, Champ oh. Christman. You mean current champ? No. No, it's no, no. Somebody no. left merchandise behind. Yeah, it's mine. Just, <laughs> and the other half of the team champs, the brain. Pat. Pat the Brain Mahoney. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> and, of course, behind the boards, we have Mr. Jamie here in his Jurassic Park cut-off hoodie there. Yes. You know, it's pretty hot out, Jamie. Yeah, I know, yeah, but I showered before I came over. <laughs> well, thank God for that. <laughs> it's a little roast in the studio today. Uh, we actually have air conditioning in here today. Yeah, Did you I, notice that? Well, I'm right in front of this fan, so it's hitting my face and feels okay. So oh, okay. I'm good. Um, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> uh, today's show, as always, is brought to you by Alternate Dimension Toys. Stop into the Newtown uh, PA location for the largest collection of toys, collectibles, and Funko Pop figures. On today's docket, we have movie news, we have TV news, and towards the end of the program, we're going to be reviewing Deadpool 2 and Solo, a, uh, a what is a Star Wars story. Star Wars. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but just a little bit of uh, you know stuff off the top. We haven't been in the studio in a couple of weeks, Bill. Right. Uh, what's been going on with us? Uh, you know, we're uh, uh, we went boating um, recently. Right. Right. Remember, we were on the boat and um, the, the yacht. The, the yacht, and uh, <laughs> you know, we were we were chilling on the boat. Uh, lots of boats uh, were around boats us. And well. yeah, boats and hose. Boats and hose and You know, we, we took the boat up and down the river, and right. then we, we right. parked the boat, uh, and then we got off the boat. That was fun. Um, <laughs> Did this really happen? Or yeah, not? yeah. We, well, yeah, we were on the boat. Okay. It was a, you know, not my, a. My not parents a, have a boat. The boat yeah. got parked. Right, it was and next you to. got off the boat. Right, it was next to Sean's parents. Uh, it got docked. The mystery boat. box could be anything. It could even be a boat. It could even be a boat. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> Peter chose the mystery box. <laughs> we uh, we had a uh, yeah a nice boating uh, day, day of boating. Um, and then other than that, I mean, uh, you know, some watery scratch offs in between here and there, but keep on scratching. Yeah, keep scratching. No winners. Um, no whammies. No whammies. Uh, you ever see those people that? You know, you get a scratch off at like a Wawa, and you know, you check it; it's not a winner, and you throw it in the, in the, you know, in the discarded loser bin. And you ever see people that go and dig through the, the bin, and then they recheck the tickets? No, I haven't seen no? these people. If yeah. you read the back of those, there's actually a second chance drawing on some of them. You go online, you put a, a code in, and it well, enters you for a chance to win something. I know some yeah, These are the people in Levittown with like actually. half we, a mouth. We got, friends oh, really? we got friends that used to do it at the Acme and Ben Salem. Kill. Ah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's like people that go around, like, uh, you know, trying to reuse a, a cigarette butt, you know, or ah. looking for looking for quarters and Ouch. iPhones Bums? and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Bums. Just Bums. real low lives of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just... I'm glad I don't smoke. Yeah, yeah really. Seriously. Coming up next on Grinding My Gears. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, yeah, it has been that. it has been a couple weeks since we've been in the studio. We've uh, we've seen some movies. We've gotten to spend some time with family and uh, sit around and jack off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but we're yes. back today to bring you some entertainment over your Memorial Day weekend festivities. Uh, so you know what, Bill? We're just gonna jump right in. To our TV Buzz segment and talk about what's been going on with TV. As we know, we're approaching the summertime. The shows that are currently on are ending for their you know summer hiatuses. Uh, so this is going to be your show hole couple months. But let's talk about what's been going on. Uh, first up, we have the fat trimming season has arrived as summer's just around the corner. Broadcast networks have announced their show renewals and cancellations for the upcoming fall slate of programming. Among some of the most notable cuts include Marvel's Inhumans, which is no surprise there because that show sucked, Quantico, Taken, Lucifer, The Exorcist, Taken. The Mick, and The X-Files. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was also canceled at Fox but was saved by NBC. Uh, the full list of renewed and canceled programs can be found over at our Facebook page. Uh, so, gentlemen, I'm going to start off with over uh, with Pat. Uh, what are some of the shows that were either canceled or brought back that you are looking forward to or a little disappointed by? None. None? You're good they with this all, list? I mean, you named Taken in there. Yeah. 
Thank God Based Liam Neeson really. wasn't in that. <laughs> I mean, because I fucking hate him. I mean, The X Files, <laughs> which was canceled twenty years ago. <laughs> uh, you know what other jabroni shows we got going? Like, I don't know. I the, mean, those shows don't sound great. Inhumans was awful. Yeah, so it was really. I think I'm I watched really. like three episodes and I couldn't finish. Until it. the day Family Guy gets canceled for the fifth time, then I'll. Get it. <laughs> I mean, out of all the shows you mentioned, how many were? given cpr over the years or repurposed or try to be or tr- have tried to been rebooted like these shows get canceled because no one wants to see the same shit done right. worse you know what i mean like it was it was good for a reason and then they try to recreate it into something that's garbage yeah so i was, uh, I was like a, a lot of them on the list okay. that you look at will be shows that aired for one season and didn't quite work out or you know had two or three um but I mean, most of this, like, you look at a show like Supernatural on the CW, I think that's going into, like, season 14. Ugh. Like, it just keeps, you know, plugging along. But a show uh, like Lucifer that got canceled at Fox because they really cleaned house. They, um, they do that. They, it just seems like they clean house every year. Like, that's why I was just about to say I was surprised that uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine getting canceled because that seemed like one of the Well, I think the thing with Fox is that they're, right? they're gearing up for their for eventual sale. buyout. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get into that. Well, did you hear bit, about Comcast putting in a yeah, counter? We're going to get into that uh, mm. during our movie segment. Mm. Um, but right I think on. Fox is really doing a good job of of, uh, you know, clearing their docket out. You're doing a good job, too, Sean. Oh, well, thank you very much, Pat. Uh, Bill, anything to add on the canceled programs? Uh, I know. Bill, just, you're just not a big TV show watcher of at least new and current programs. Yeah, new and current stuff. Like, I if just it's, don't... like, a next-gen fucking marathon on, <laughs> like, whatever, like, yeah. Wii TV or Miami, whatever it's Miami on. Vice, it, you, it's... you text me at 2 in the morning that that episode of Miami Vice <laughs> is on, like, Cozy or something. Like, right, yeah, Pat, it. turn on Cozy. Uh, Wesley <laughs> Snipes is on as a drug dealer. <laughs> Don Johnson just kicked yeah. some dude in the teeth. <laughs> like, Pat, check out this song that's playing. It's the episode with Ted Nugent on there. Nuge. I mean, He's a coke dealer. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was a coke dealer. <laughs> Great episode, by the way. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, uh, you know, unless it's like Heroes and Impact Channel 242, where I can <laughs> Impact. watch uh, Star Trek from 8 to midnight. <laughs> I can honestly say I'm not watching anything. The only show I'm watching is Silicon Valley, and I just ended. That was the only show I was watching. I got, I think I got up to like season two with that show. It's all right. Yeah, it's funny. I got to check that out. It's a good show. They, uh, they booted uh, What's-His-Face off of it, though. TJ yeah, Miller? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He got him. He's, He's getting booted from everything right now. He, he can't even... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I think they booted him from the uh, from the Mucinex commercials, too. Yeah, he's a hashtag Me Too victim. Yep. Apparently. Yep. Uh, remember, remember... Morgan he, Freeman, too, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Morgan. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, TJ no Miller was... voiceover work. You know, TJ Miller was the voice of the uh, Mucinex yeah. uh, guy, right? Yeah, a little yeah. green... Yeah. Uh, he sounds like he has a cold ball. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he always sound like he's stuffed yeah, up? Yeah, because he's, hey, he's point. snorting It's shit. all jammed up. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> all right, moving along. Bill, read our next story. Okay. Beer's pretty good. It is uh, good. Beer, yeah, we got good. the Bud Light Orange. Bud Light here today. Orange. Uh, for any of you summer folk uh, enjoying a barbecue today, why don't yeah, you Yeah, maybe, maybe you're out, out on your boat right now and you're listening to yeah, this show. Get on your boat and get Bud Light Orange. Bud Light Orange. It's cool. The taste it's of a new generation. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's hip. It's fresh. It's Noah's Arcade. Uh, and with that, the prequel craze has officially hit rock bottom as the premium cable company, Epix, has, na- uh, has announced that plans for a series featuring the origin story of Bruce Wayne's beloved butler, Alfred Pennyworth. Pennyworth has been given a 10 I episode a feeling about this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 10 episodes straight to order commitment from MGM owned network and will not take place within the same universe as Fox's Gotham. Wow. <laughs> which wow. will be ending wow. after next season. So we have <laughs> Wow, breaking news. We what have, were they thinking? <laughs> I don't know if they were. So Who we have the a, fuck wants to see a show what's about it a dude? Just be cleaning someone else's house. Who are the ad wizards man? who came up with this one? Because he's my butler. Yeah. <laughs> I right. don't yeah. get it, man. So we have here Epics, which I don't think anybody uh, was aware that is that this is included in their yeah, cable lineup uh, until, we just, until we just told now, you. This really pisses me off to no end. Yeah, me too, Dave. Uh, <laughs> so we got Pennyworth, a butler-based Pennyworth, Gotham a City story. <laughs> TV show. Sucks. 
Uh, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> and I want to have them answered immediately. Who are these people and why are they <laughs> greenlighting these shows is the question. Yeah, so uh, basically, anybody going to watch this? No. 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 Right. no. So. Like, what can that show possibly be about? Like, as I just said, what, he was cleaning someone else's house before Wayne Manor or they're going to show him in, like, now, I've, World War II? I've or, like, watched, I think days, I watched two seasons place. of Gotham. I think I watched two. Um, and... From all accounts, like obviously from the story, you know, it's not going to be connected to that in any way. But their take on Alfred on that show is that he's like ex-military, which is kind of cool because like people, yeah, like people you know break into Wayne Manor and Bruce Wayne on the show is a fucking little kid, so he's got to yeah, step yeah, in I saw and some of that. kick some ass. But like, but it's like all right, other than that, like who he's the, the hell cares? Well, he's the <laughs> and I mean, in, in those two regards, I mean, you you know, you either are going to show this guy, you know. He has to be somewhere in that in that middle there, right? Somewhere where it's like yeah, he's got to do something, you know. <laughs> like, what's the big dilemma of the week? Like, what kind of dust mop he's going to use? Yeah. <laughs> but but that's the thing too is, is that you know in most oh my god in most uh, you know retellings he's not really somebody who yeah, he's who just does an old much, man, you know. Yeah, he knows where the back cave is. He organizes stuff, but. You know, he's, he's not Michael been... Caine. Yeah, he's not. So. <laughs> Just get the tea, Alfred, right. and shut the frig up. <laughs> I mean, Christ. Anything else to add to this stupid story? No. Anyone were, were... I just can't believe this got passed through a through a boardroom yeah. or a conference room. I mean, it's, I, it's I, fucking baffling. That's I would what I'm saying. My like, why don't we actually pitch the ideas that we have if stuff like this is getting approved? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible... Yeah. Uh, now terrible. some other studio is going to pitch Aunt May as a spinoff. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that was already. Yeah. Wait, wasn't that in like development a couple years ago? No, no. There was something about that, like an Aunt May like prequel. Or well, something. if you watch the uh, <laughs> like on, on YouTube, if you watch Collider Video on their channel, uh, the guys over at Movie Talk, who we've had a number of their uh, panelists on our show call in, uh, a couple of them like legit pitched an Aunt May movie. Uh, they. <laughs> That's, I think that's we, uh, what I'm thinking of. Yeah. For multiple episodes, pitched like an anime movie where they keep adding to it, much like our biblical uh, cinematic universe that yeah. uh, Bill has pitched Bill before. Um, universe. Oh, it's great. <laughs> but I mean, it was, it was very I'm still waiting to see that one. <laughs> Many <laughs> people are. Train. We're actually yeah. going to start filming that uh, later this summer, so uh -huh. uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but we'll we're do. going to... Uh, Switch gears here. Staying in the Bat, man, uh, bat Realm, Batman. Arrow star Stephen Amell announced last week that the character of Batwoman will be joining the Arrowverse. Uh, speaking, he said, We're incredibly excited to announce that we'll be doing another crossover event this fall on the CW. Yeah, I bet he is. And we'll be introducing a new character, Amell said. For the very first time appearing, we'll be fighting alongside Batwoman, which is terrific. The crossover is going to make it to air in December. I need to leave right now and start filming it. Stop the presses, everybody. We have a full connection to the Bat family on the CW Arrowverse. You know, Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, all that good stuff. Uh, what are we thinking about possibly bringing in Batman to uh, TV? We know Gotham's never going to really show him. Uh, Bill, what do you think? Well, Batwoman, right? Well, I mean, if Batwoman's in it, Batman's got to be there somewhere. They brought yeah. in Superman last year well, on yeah. the Supergirl show. Uh, you know, I mean, the the TV shows, I mean, for CW, um, you know, obviously um, Arrow's been doing very well. It's got Yeah, I just know, watched that finale this week and you know, The Flash I, I, as well. I think, yeah, and I mean, you know, those shows, they're not, they're not over the top. They're not, um, you know, incredibly flashy in that regard, but they do hold... Uh, strong uh, viewership and, and followings. You know, they kind of remind me of, uh, you know, how well, like, uh, Charmed and, uh, like, Supernatural did back yeah, in the uh, day. Charmed is getting a reboot. Yeah. I believe. Ugh. Yeah, don't, don't reboot Pat's that. favorite what a, show. What a fucking surprise. I mean. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know. Come on. Don't bullshit me. They're, they're doing really well with um, incorporating things. So I think, uh, you know, CW's, you know, and, and, I mean, when you look at the back end of the, the – movie studio side of things you know they're trying to now mirror um what the tv shows are doing so i think this is going to be cool and you know it should uh should play out all right now uh bill uh pat or mike uh, have you ever have you ever watched any of these 
Yes, you I haven't DC watched shows. I haven't watched any of them, but I know like from people I talk to that Arrow is definitely like a show that's that's yeah, it's a solid good. show. Yeah, it's a good show. See, my question is like, so if they have done a nice job, now these all play on the CW, right? They're yeah. all on the same network. Yeah. All right, so they're all owned by the same studio. Why not? I mean, if you're going to have a universe around this. And Arrow is is Arrow pretty much at the forefront of that universe? Is yeah, that was the like, first is one. Is he the pillar at this I point? I mean, okay. essentially, Arrow is Batman in in this series. I mean, okay. he's got you know, Raz Al Ghul's been in there. Like, he's got a lot of Batman's you know story okay, you know, so, storylines. So, if you've already introduced somebody like Raz Al Ghul, who's that's awesome, right? I like Raz Al Ghul as a as a pivotal character in the Batman universe. You know, and you're starting to evolve and you're starting to become a more well developed show and you got more viewers than you did season one where Raz Al Ghul was in there. Like you're hitting me up with Batwoman right now. Like I haven't watched the show, but you're hitting me up right now with Batwoman. I mean, give me give me a fucking break. Give me something more than that. That's that's what I would say. You know what I mean? Now I could be wrong, this season could be phenomenal. She could have a very relevant role in it. And this is somebody who hasn't this is object total objective point of view because I haven't seen the show yet. But I understand the show has been popular, has a lot of viewers and is uh, critically acclaimed as far as this uh, this DC universe on the CW is concerned. I would say, open my eyes a little more. You know what I mean? Make okay. wow me a little more than Batwoman. So maybe Batwoman's not the you know the Bat person that you want to see pop in. Obviously, people want to see you know Batman <laughs> right in there. Now we know that uh, DC is getting their own streaming service going on. You're going to have uh, the Teen Titans, or I guess it's just called Titans. You know, Nightwing's going to be in there. All those guys. Uh, Pat, are you excited at all to see any interpretation of, you know, other than Gotham, you know, the Bat family on the small screen, or is it strictly, you know, a big screen property? Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, just going back to Mike's point, the only real CW stuff I've ever watched was some of Arrow, and I thought it was okay. I mean, everything else I've seen is just, uh, I guess, too network television-y for me. It's very cheesed up it looks like oh, the cheese factor is clearly I, there in all their shows yeah like, there's episodes of the flash where like it's just painful to watch exactly and that, and that just immediately turns me off and okay. i love the show but i mean there's you know when yeah. you for i mean really any show when you have a 23 episode season mm-hmm. yeah there's going to be a good chunk of that that's just going to be a cheese throwaway up. filler you know cheese which is what it seems like yeah I mean, and like it looks to me it looks like every time i see like a, a clip or like a commercial it's like all right it looks like everyone's just deciding to play dress up in costumes and go out <laughs> and run around and do whatever the hell they do right now as far as you know with that point being said i i hope that they don't cheese up the the bat verse or whatever they're trying to do because i think it, that would be really good suited for like a netflix thing like yeah. Nightwing. like I, I always talk about daredevil and stuff i think he's a perfect character to go that route i don't think they ever will but i just think you kind of water down your product and your excitement if you try to put everything in network television because the expectations are a lot higher now considering with all the the films out and everything like that and you kind of see why dc suffering a little bit and I think some of that has to do with maybe the way that their television shows are interpreted, and then their movies obviously don't live up to the standard either. So it's kind of like I show think us something for, different here. For my money, uh, the TV side of the DC universe is, is better. better than what we've gotten. And in that's the sad. Films. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, for as much you know, like we were just saying with you know the you know the filler episodes of these shows, like you know with the Flash and stuff. Yeah, I mean the Flash from what we've gotten from. I think they're on season four right now, uh, or just finished season four. I mean that that interpretation of the Flash is way cooler than what we saw with Ezra Miller mm-hmm. in Justice League, um, and probably way better than what we're gonna <laughs> whenever we see the yeah. Flash's movie on screen. Um, you know, they're it's it's fighting an uphill battle yeah. uh, for a reason that they really didn't need to put themselves in. I mean, they kind of did that to themselves. You know, you yeah. you introduce these properties on TV, and then you're like, oh. Well, these are popular now. Let's try to make them into a movie, right. and then you like, know the fans love this version, and we're going to make it something else. And yeah, it, yeah. It's like I not think the I, I think the ideas are there, but the people they behind have, the ideas aren't there. So they, yeah, the they have their is. limitations, and network television, I think, really just kind of waters down the product of what it should be. Right. Uh, so yeah. December is uh, only seven months away, so uh, get ready for that one. Bill, finish yes. up our TV buzz here with our last story. 
Yes. Cartoon Network is bringing the Thundercats back to television for a new animated series currently titled Thundercats Roar. Oh. Which Shut the f*** up! up. <laughs> which will debut in 2019. The artwork for the series, however, has caught the ire yes. of social media users. Big surprise. Who oh, seem to be very unhappy with the look of the childish drawings of characters we've seen have in the you past. fucking seen this shit i have not oh my uh -oh. god it sucks is terrible I, I haven't seen it either like they'll put like the you know the art up on the different posts and it, it looks TV to pull so up fucking anything. terrible <laughs> it's it's <laughs> embarrassing it looks like it's drawn for a two-year-old like uh, i remember thundercats when i was a kid it was badass and it, yeah it was fucking cool the yeah. you know the art was cool the storylines were cool uh, yeah the action is great you know like and now you're going to make, like, I I have kids at home. Who, uh, my stepson watches Teen Titans Go on Cartoon Network or whatever fucking channel it's on. <laughs> and it's ridiculously, you know, Bad. terrible. Yeah. And that's what this show looks like it's going to be. Just little tiny sprite cartoonish, uh, you know, caricatures nice. of themselves. Oh, I hate um, that art style. It, no. it's, it's really bad. Jamie, you're a little no. upset by the story. What do you think about that? I, I don't like it either. I remember the original as well as yeah. when I was growing up. I mean, and, I, had and I loved I had, it. I had the toys. I had fucking coloring books. I think everybody had the toys. I, I had the sword with the uh, yeah the arm thing that he had. I and I had all I kinds still of have stuff. a Thundercats shirt in my drawer. It had awesome it. '80s original songs. Yeah, that go with the show. Fucking guitar <laughs> riffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody else as upset about this story as I am? No. No? no I, mean, pretty, uh, I am. I'm apathetic toward it. Uh, I mean, it'd be cool if it was cool, but... They're, they're messing wow. with my childhood. Wow. That's what they're doing. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess our time is past to... Yeah, to nobody cares. Yeah, it sounds like it's it. not geared towards... Nobody cares about 30-something yeah, white people yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are going to flip the script and change the focus to the world of film news and reviews. Uh, I'll start off with this first one, Bill. Uh, despite This is what you were alluding to a little bit earlier. Yes, despite the impending deal announced previously between Fox and Disney, it seems that Comcast is now set to outbid Disney in their efforts to acquire their film and TV properties. The new offerings from Comcast will reportedly be for $62 billion in cash, topping Disney's $52 billion in stock options and assets. Pat, as a uh, person who uh, subscribes to Comcast Cable... And nude, nudie <laughs> that's magazines. Good, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, nudie uh, magazines. Uh, eh, I... Uh, to me, Yay. oh, durka, durka, durka. Uh, you know, uh, I, I just think, yeah, Pat. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, as a fan, you want to see that the, for, on the Marvel side of it, all the characters go to Marvel. Right. You don't want to see them really split that's, up. That's, that's pretty really much what everybody cares about. And that's really the only thing I'm looking at in this deal um, as to will it be good or bad. Now, say that deal they do no get deal. the deal, and are they going to share the characters for the MCU and do like a Sony thing, right. or are they just trying to do a cash grab and say, oh, we got our own ideas for characters like the X-Men and Fantastic Four and all that. But, um... Uh, Bazinga! I don't know. I mean, as long as Marvel, you know, all the characters go under Marvel's roof somehow, then I'll be okay with that. If not, then it's a big disappointment. Now, my interpretation of the, you know, the letter of the law for the, the, you know, the Marvel deal that they have going on with both Fox and Sony is you know think of it uh, and i think i brought this up on the show before think of it as you are leasing a car from a dealership so you pay the dealership you know a monthly premium for the car that you're leasing from them but you're also understanding that you don't outright own that car yourself right you know, you're paying for the right to use it which is what fox and sony are doing for marvel they don't own uh, you know, Sony doesn't own the Spider-Man characters. Fox doesn't own the X-Men characters and mm -hmm. the Fantastic Four characters. They are simply leasing them from Marvel as a whole. Now, they have the option to keep making these films in perpetuity because they have, you know, the rights to use them. Mm -hmm. But once they lapse on that, like, they have a certain time frame where they... They have to make you know, movies. Yeah, they have to be in production stuff. of a new movie in a certain amount of time frame or else those rights lapse It's kind of how, like, Fox slid in that Venom thing before that expired. Yeah, and it's right. also how Marvel Disney got back 
Daredevil right. and Blade and those characters because they weren't in production. You know, mm -hmm. Fox had them and they weren't in production of a new movie. <laughs> And they um, did a meaningless Fantastic Four reboot to hang on to that for a little yeah, while, too. I, that's the only reason they did Ugh. it, because that movie was fucking right. garbage. So. so my understanding is that this deal should, you know, Comcast went out in this bid. You know, because Fox doesn't own their rights, I can't lease a car and then sell it to somebody else. Right. So regardless of a, whether they sell to Comcast or whoever it is, those rights to those characters owned by Marvel revert back to them no matter who it gets sold to if it gets to them okay, if it doesn't right. so that is my understanding i mean that it could come out to be a different story mm -hmm. but so I, even if so even if uh yes. let me just interject here so even if disney purchased fox fox can still make movies make the uh, make the x-men movies and not well they would be selling the movie rights back okay so, like, with the the Sony and Marvel deal, yeah, Marvel, when Spider-Man Homecoming came out, Marvel didn't make any money off of that movie. Mm -hmm. They are simply allowed to include him into the other MCU movies. Right. So they don't get anything for the, the production, they don't get anything for the distribution, but when he's in Infinity War, That's obviously, right. okay. you yeah, know, they get money from yeah. that. As long as there's some kind of incorporation of the characters in the larger right. umbrella, then sure. So, I mean... You know, if it does get sold to Comcast, I don't think there's going to be any issue, you know, moving forward unless I'm completely wrong on that. Um, but, you know, whenever this deal goes, does go through, which should be sometime in 2019, um, you know, we'll, we'll start getting news of, you know, the uh, X-Men are going to appear here. The Fantastic Four are going to appear here. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take a couple of years until, you know, all the, the ink dries on everything, but it, it will happen. Bill, are you ready to read our next story, please? Yes. So the upcoming second chapter of the new It franchise has added <laughs> more cast members to round out the adult versions of its characters. Joining the cast is Bill Hader, James McAvoy, oh and God. Jessica Chastain uh, are going to be uh, Andy Bean, James Ranzone, and Jay Ryan, who will portray... Uh, Stan, Eddie, and Ben, respectively. Yeah, baby, yeah! Hmm. It, chapter 2 will arrive in theaters on September 6, 2019, and production is set to start this summer. I'm very happy with the adult casting so far. It's yeah. the first I heard of it. Uh, yeah, I didn't know yeah, uh, Professor X, yeah, yeah. newer uh, James McAvoy here, uh, is going to be in there. Uh, Bill Hader, very funny guy. He's playing Richie. Uh, perfect casting. Yeah, that's, yeah it's uh, I mean, if you've ever seen Bill Hader in a movie that's not, you know, a straight up comedy, like I, I brought this up plenty of times on the show. Comedians have the, you know, the easiest uh, path to being dramatic actors oh, because yeah. of you know, the you know, just the inner workings of the mind. Of yeah, I think he's gonna have great range. Uh, I really, do. Like I think that. that's an absolute perfect casting. Jessica Chastain, uh, terrific actress, and you know, a ginger just like you know her, her yeah. counterpart there. Um, I know the other guy, Jay Ryan. He looks familiar. I don't know exactly what he's from. I mean, his face looks familiar. Uh, he's like on Grey's Anatomy or something, something stupid like that. Um, so that's fine. But if you read the book, like. Yeah, obviously Ben is like a little fat kid. Yeah. But then he grows out to be like a, a He's like svelte. an actor or something, right? He's like a yeah, yeah he's like a svelte, story. you know, good looking dude. Um John Ritter plays him, right? In the, uh, yeah. in the original. He does, yeah. yeah. Yes, John Ritter. He's a Sven Jolly. A Sven Jolly. <laughs> Very good. Um but yeah, you guys all know that I'm absolutely terrified Gay. of clowns. No. Oh. Huh. I'm scared of clowns. Oh uh, yeah. Of clowns. That too. Um but so it was a it was a big stretch for me to go out and see this movie. Uh, absolutely and, and loved it. And the circus it. that you went to? Yeah, I went to the circus. <laughs> did you go to the circus? <laughs> I did. Shit himself. To the, the Big Apple Circus. Where is that at? Uh, outside of uh, Franklin Mills in oh. the parking lot. Oh. I actually got nice. free. Thank you, Allied uh, Allied Media there for sending me some free passes to that one. Uh, that was a good one. Yeah, the only reason I had a good time is because the clowns weren't like 
clowns, you know what I mean? Like, they had their <laughs> ah, faces, like... They're just people just like makeup. Paint, like, I, a, I, a <laughs> slight painting, like, powdered up a little bit. I thought you were going to say it's because you, you were yeah. with your wife, yeah. and... Yeah. Just make you know, up. I thought you were going to say because you were with your wife, and, you know, you <laughs> cherish her, you know, no, her company. Uh, and, no, abso- uh, clowns are funny. Absolutely not. Clowns. clowns are not funny. They're all goofing around. Not and funny and whatsoever. Each other and throwing balls and stuff. And Shut up! They're party promoters. Yeah, yeah. They're promoting something. Death. Who doesn't like a good clown? <laughs> uh, but we had a good time at the, the circus. Uh, I had a good time with It, and I'm looking forward to having a good time with It Chapter 2. <sighs> Anybody else? It Chapter 2? Yeah. It. 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 <laughs> I'm excited. I didn't have a time to... I just, I just found out about this casting as you guys just, just right broke, now bro- just broke the news Look, it was yeah. absolute <laughs> breaking news breaking news here on the cinescape mike chrisman heard it first straight from <laughs> the See, this is the kind of hard-nosed journalism that too. we're providing straight from the utter of the cow right from the, from the teats. teats i heard about when the three well, other so when's the movie coming out like, eh. is september, it this summer s- september, september 6 september again? Ni- 2019 oh next okay next, next year okay same director right yes okay. and andy muschietti Anybody new Interesting. No. Beverage? I'm excited. I'm very excited. Yeah, I can good. see your boner from under the table, how excited you are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Why don't you get excited, Sean, for the next topic? Okay. Well, the upcoming 25th installment in the James bum, Bond bum, franchise bum, 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 has officially bum, found bum, its director bum, bum, in Danny bum, Boyle bum, 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 after bum, months of speculation. Dan, 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 Along with this news comes a release date of November 8th, 2019. Daniel Craig will also return to reprise the role of 007 for the last time. So that means he's going to get an STD in this picture finally. Yeah, the crab, the crabs are going <laughs> to finally take him out and retire. Who's he going to bang in this one? Well, he's banging like every kind of nationality. <laughs> exactly, like, right? he's got to have some kind of disease. <laughs> oh man, oh, <laughs> oh, he gets it. James Bond dies of herpes. <laughs> yeah, really bad herpes. It wasn't a supervillain that gets him; it was an STD. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Anybody? Quantum More of than... chlamydia. There you go. That's good. <laughs> Hashtag name a James Bond uh, film with STDs in it. I right. think the, Let's uh, get that guy. I haven't seen a James Bond film since Quantum of Solace. Um, what came out after that? So yeah, was that the first one with track. Daniel Craig? No, no there, there was Casino Royale, Royale yeah, and then that, and then there were, there were two more. Skyfall, Skyfall and Spectre. 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 Spectre wasn't very. Spectre. I don't think I saw Spectre. Spectre it was boring. Good. You know what it is? Yeah. It's like I feel like I watch these movies. Skyfall was boring and too, and it had Blofeld in it too, and it was still boring. Uh, I I think I, there's. I, I like the action. I like the you know all the stunts and you know Daniel Craig's like a real badass. You know I'm not but a big something Daniel that, Craig guy. You know what though? Yeah. I, I think he's a total badass in these films. Give, give but me there's Pierce just Brosnan back. There's just some element missing. It just doesn't it's feel a drive like drive-by fruiting. It doesn't feel like a Bond film. <laughs> yeah. It just does, these films don't feel like Bond films anymore. They feel like. They're too gritty. Uh, they're just they're they're going along with like, that new that like the, born, yeah, like the, the James Bourne's, Bond films are like know, the supposed like to be yeah. like overly campy in a sense, yeah. and it doesn't have that feel anymore no, at all. They're more gritty and grounded. See, the, the thing with the old Bond movies was like the the storylines were real simple in the sense where it was just like, okay, here's your villain, yeah, and this is what the villain's the, he's gonna, gonna blow do. Up the world, but <laughs> Kim Jong Un. But it was like. The, when when the movie would slow down, that would he's a knucklehead. That would mean he was just going to hook up with a chick, and then the movie yeah. would resume. The slow moments were very watchable in the Sean Connerys and the Roger Moore films. But that's like, because they were very watchable. But that's because they would pushing. usually have intimacy with like with the female leads, you know. And their acting would carry those scenes too. Yeah, like, just their presence on screen and so forth. Right, right. and then the Definitely movie would pick presence. back up. I would like to see Bill as a James Bond character. I'd like to see Bill as a Bond girl or Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> What if, solid Bond what guy. If I, what if I just play? I'll, I'll just play all of them. Bill could definitely yeah. be a, no. Bill could definitely be a Bond villain. Yeah. Bill a la a, J, uh, a Michael a Mike Myers character. In, <laughs> He'd be know, like Alan Bond Cumming movie. in a uh, Golden Eye, yeah. sort of like <laughs> just like the, the tech guy. Like, he, needs, he needs that shirt, and he could definitely pull it off. Yep, yeah, I agree. I, I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, who was the the one like the helicopter pilot that helped uh, Bond and uh, Golden Eye? The chick. Uh, nah, it was the it was it was a guy, Joe Don Baker. I don't well, the know. Russian dude uh, <laughs> helped him. Who was his other? No, guy? like he like hel- he like piloted him out of Cuba at the end. Oh, I forget what his name. Yeah, that was, was Joe Don Baker's character, right? Well, what's his? The, his the movie act, name? I don't know. I don't, don't freaking remember. Uh, the bad guy. The bad guy from Fletch. 
think so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the I bad think. guy from Fletch. Bad guy, bad from, guy Fletch. from Fletch. All right. All right. Well, For our let's... younger viewers, Fletch is a comedy from the <laughs> early 80s starring Chevy Chase. <laughs> where uh, Stop whining. Chevy Chase assumes multiple uh, personalities, in a sense, uh, using his comedic range. I would range. like to see Bill in a remake of Fletch, too. <laughs> I'm so waiting for that Ghost Dad <laughs> remake. Ghost yeah. <laughs> Gotta get your project rolling here, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, well, uh, certainly the, uh, you know, we, we were, you know, supposed to go through the Weinstein company, but now that He uh, just got arrested. Yeah, the hell with that guy. That, that got blown out. Uh, <laughs> in more ways. We need the, under, we need the uh, Under Siege reboot where uh, Tazi's on a train with terrorists. Yeah, well, that's well, well, I want it, the Dark uh, Territory reboot where that chick pops up out and shows her tits. Well, we can't really do trains. <laughs> it's that one scene. It's a whole movie around yep. that one scene. It's all I remember from being a 10-year-old kid. Well, we can't, <laughs> can't really do rain, uh, trains since... Uh, uh, gonna say you know, Rain Man. Yeah, since Liam Neeson <laughs> just Tazi did that movie Rain on Man. a train. <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch Jeopardy. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna buy my boxer shorts from Kmart. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so moving on. Though? Yeah, what's next on the uh, oh, list? Oh, Billy. Oh, read our last one. No, I don't. I won't read just it. Just do it. No. All right. <laughs> What are you saying? No. Let's go. So, wow, well, uh, that's all right. Okay. Uh, well. well, as I'm. Uh, Boba Fett standalone film is reportedly the next Star Wars story film in development as Logan director James Mangold has been tapped to direct the film. X-Men Dark Phoenix director Simon Kinberg will also team with Mangold to pen the script. So, (laughs) Solo, now Boba Fett. Discuss amongst yourselves. I saw a great tweet about this. And I'll, I'll read it. It was a uh, yeah. Read some it. guy, Derek Hunter. He's blue check verified, whoever the hell he is. Uh, he yeah, said, "Whoever we're not. he said, whoever designed the costume back in 1980 should get a huge check because a cool costume is all Boba Fett has ever been. He died <laughs> falling into a pit after a jetpack malfunction. The character deserves a Darwin Award, not a movie." <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this right after Solo. Yeah, Mike you was and saying, I, we, yeah, we went to the bar know, and we talked about this. Does anybody <laughs> know the first appearance of Boba Fett? Yes, it was the Star Wars holiday it, uh, it special cartoon. It was. was atrocious. Well, not it wasn't a cartoon. It was. Well, that was part of it action. was a cartoon. Ah, oh, was that? Yeah, okay. It was like it was the. You worst know, I have that ever. movie on a hard drive that I downloaded, <laughs> but I've still never it's watched it. So bad. <laughs> like, you want to laugh? You get. You should get bombed up or on some kind of different substance and watch that and you'll just be like what you know i'm gonna i'm wife? gonna come back to that because <laughs> once we get into our solo discussion uh with the wookies uh i i want to i want to circle back to this okay uh but a boba fett standalone movie uh i don't think it's necessary i don't think these mm-hmm. star mm-hmm. wars story standalone movies are necessary they're, money grabbers. Mm-hmm. they're absolutely money grabs yeah the they reason. grabbed your money for and this is the reason why bill <laughs> tazi didn't go to see solo with us on the, uh, thursday night um but i mean unless it's something new i don't see the point of you know going back to the well and drawing on something like rogue one was cool you know, it, it gave us the backstory into, you know, how yeah. the Death Star plans got going, you right. know, the formations of the Rebel Alliance, which is all well and good. But at the same time, you know, it didn't give us anything new. Yeah, there was no, like, characters on. that were existing in that as part of the main group. No, and the, which was the same thing happens here with Solo, which we're going to talk about in just a couple of minutes. Um, but, I mean, Boba Fett, you, he doesn't take his helmet off at any point that we've ever seen him. We know he's a clone of Django Fett, so Django. Like I, I just don't really like. How are you going to make a whole movie on this? It's it seems I mean, stupid. It, it's they'll, find, be, they'll find a way to do yeah, it. It's gonna the be, point is, is that it's to Pat's point to the, to his point of reading out a tweet. I mean, this guy just became a cult favorite, right? Because he was just cool looking. I mean, the guy has really no relevance to to the universe at all. No. I mean. He literally what he is, he, had a, he had like five minutes worth of screen time in the in Return of the Jedi, and then he like popped up once in one of the other ones. Well, he was in Empire Strikes Back. I mean, he he captured he brought Solo to yeah. He tracked them the best bin yeah. and stuff. But I mean, well, I think you see him it, in it, the it, special edition of you know, A New Hope. He pops up in the yeah you know, the Jabba's palace or yeah. cantina or whatever. He doesn't do anything, <laughs> but you just see him. 
<laughs> he just has like as Mike's saying like that essence and then over the years fans have just like made up their own stories in their head and then you know that like, got added like, to like kind of like oh he's girl the best fan bounty. fiction yeah he's like the best <laughs> bounty hunter in the galaxy and all that so I mean I don't know I mean what if he was probably the worst though like, that's why I didn't have anything to do well, I guess that's maybe why you need the movie <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> just like a slapstick comedy of like him trying to go out on these bounty oh, what, missions like Thor Ragnarok <laughs> pretty much except <laughs> even trash. worse than that <laughs> God, that would suck <laughs> Uh. <laughs> it would have like a soundtrack a Balkan <laughs> Boba Fett has been a down on his luck Imperial bounty hunter for the past 15 years but he's about to find out <laughs> no the bounty hunting isn't so easy check out Boba a Star Wars story next year in 2019 it's rated PG PG-13 <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll see. And then it sucks. Unless they make it rated <laughs> R, which would be awesome. Yeah, all right. It's like Logan and shit. That'd be ridiculous, but yeah. that will never happen. So that is going to conclude our flipping the script segment. You know what? Since we're just in the Star Wars universe, we're going to stick it right there. Stick it. Stick it in there. Uh, let's do our solo a Star Wars story talk first. Uh, to everybody listening... Uh, Pat, myself, and Mike were the only three members of this uh, ah, crew that Bill. went to see ah. it. Uh, Bill, you did not. First, before we get into everything, let us know why you did not want to go see this movie. Uh, you know, you kind of touched on it uh, moments ago, where it's these, um, you know, these Star Wars story films. Um, you know, they're just they're money grabbers, right? They're just, um, you know, they typically don't you know offer anything new they're a more so um you know taking a character taking a, a storyline from the um from the original uh stories and and are just uh you know expanding that and just giving you a you know a telling of you know what you know what this would have looked like um you know in the in the years uh you know years um you know that would have gone by and um, for me, it's like I I know the character, I know you know what he's about, and for me, it's not offering me anything new. Like I like, oh yeah, finally I get to see the the Kessel Run. I don't even know if that's in the it's movie. It's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's it's taking all the little the little chunks of uh, of dialogue and stuff, and and you know making a story out of it. You know that's why a they Star call Wars it story. A Star Wars story. <laughs> so for me. This wasn't a movie that, you know, made me want to run out on a Thursday night right after work and go see. And, yeah, you know, I can watch this when it comes out on DVD or when it comes out, you know, on TV or whatever. So, yeah, I just didn't. Netflix. Yeah, I didn't have an inkling to go Hulu. see this movie. So, let me let me ask you. So, you. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. You can, <laughs> so, you're telling it. me that. So, you talk about Star Wars spinoff. Star Wars spinoff movies. So, you're telling me that. After you see a movie like Rogue One, and that kind which of, you like, that kind of sets the yeah. bar, right? That so so I know I think Pat's in agreement uh, agreement with me. I don't know if you guys are. I feel like Rogue One is the best Star Wars movie I've seen since Return of the Jedi. Like like since since the since the originals, I think mean, it's absolutely the best Star Wars movie yeah, it's I've up seen. There. Mm -hmm. um, that's just how I feel. So if that sets the bar. You you weren't the least bit intrigued to see what another spinoff movie will look like under the same under the same uh, student under Disney. No. Okay. Right. <laughs> not saying I, I was. I mean, I I'm was, not saying I, I wouldn't go see it. But like, and the great it, debate is on between Mike Crispin and Bill Tazi regarding the Star Wars. It just wasn't something that I was like eager to go see. It's not you know I could go see this week three from now, and it'll have the same buzz that it has right now, which is. Practically no buzz. There's oh, nothing Billy. that's you know See, buzzing about Mike, this before, movie. Before you uh, rebut here, Bill's having a really hard time going to the movies in general. So. Well, you even just said it about Boba Fett. <laughs> uh, no, about no, the no, Boba Fett. Regardless of like, no, no, not even about a Star Wars. Any movie, you're having a hard time going because when we went to see Deadpool, <laughs> yeah, you had remarked, yeah, about. 
going on a Thursday night and dealing oh, with the crowds and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah opening which, nights in general, which I absolutely a hundred percent agree on. So if you ever get the chance to go to press screenings of movies, ladies and gentlemen, please do. You'll enjoy your theater theater going experience ever so much more. Um, Star Wars is different now. Like, like Star Wars has legit Star Wars fans going to see that movie. It's not like a Marvel night where you got a bunch of assholes that just yell during the movie. Like, so I mean, I don't think like to the Thursday night thing. Yeah, the clap yeah. guy sucked. Yeah. So how was the uh, how was the crowd on? <laughs> the crowd on was on night? point. Yeah, they're I mean, fine. The crowd yeah. was fine. Didn't have an issue because it was a Star Wars movie. They're there. They're all there for the same reason. Like they don't want to be, have any interruptions. They want to watch yeah, the movie. Qui Gon Jinn be- was out in the lobby. And- <laughs> <laughs> I, st- I scammed a poster out of the uh, theater crew. The worst the guy end. in the theater was probably Mike. <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> Mike made Peanut Alley in did front Mike of the seat. Did Mike have peanuts? He did. I've yeah. done peanuts oh, in the theater before. Oh, but uh, I mean, where the whole a, floor a is covered. pile of mess. He looks like he just one... sat through nine innings of a baseball game. <laughs> yeah, it was Peanut Alley. <laughs> it was, like, ridiculous. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, bad. Control. That bag was gigantic. <laughs> All right, well, Sean that was gonna, bigger than the bags at the ball game. Sean's gonna step out for a moment here. So, <laughs> so no, I want to get back. So you're so when you let me ask you a question. Now, yeah. Maybe you maybe you remember, maybe you don't. So going into Rogue One, yeah. were you just kind of like fuck this? It's a money grabber, but fine. I guess I'll go see it. Is that what was well? That I here? think with you know? Rogue One, um, I, I I didn't really understand what the movie was was really gonna be about. Like you know. We knew that it was going to take place, you know, in between uh, uh, Jedi and um, and what Force Awakens and stuff. And no, before uh, that, no, it's before New Hope. Or, you think the end of or, uh, Revenge of the Sith? Vi- vi- yeah, vice yeah. versa. I know what you um, mean. All right. But um, yeah, like you know, I don't, I don't think I really knew what to expect. I didn't really have much expectations for it because I just thought it was going to be a uh, you know, new flick that's going to try and uh, touch on on the uh, on the old uh, familiarities, and uh, yet it exceeded it. So you know, great. But these 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 new Star Wars stories, they're not. It's not. Uh, I guess for me, I you know, like uh, like what Pat was saying earlier, I'm kind of cemented in the old movies. Uh, you know, I do. There are things that I, I enjoy about the the um, you know the newer trilogy, um, you know episodes um, one you know one two and three. But all in all, you know four five and six are you know like my grail, and I I feel like you know I I enjoy those, and I don't want you know too much. I don't want too much new shit being. With the character you know, specifically too, right? So, yeah, you know, like, like I, I kind of, okay. I kind of, I, like I kind of like. Yeah, like Rogue I, One was an event where this is like a character, and like I but get you, what you're saying. But you, yeah, you, you, you bring up, you bring up how you love the nostalgia of it. You love the the throwback of four, five, and six. Loves the dick. And Rogue One, the way that movie was filmed, <laughs> right? It almost felt like you were watching Episode Four, Five, or Six. Agreed. Yeah, it was filmed the same way because it led right now, into knowing that four. this was a solo prequel movie. Did you have any type of inclination that you no, know what? I, this might be filmed the same way? No, um, I mean, uh, yeah, the I, character itself, I, I don't really have a big attachment to. I don't really care about uh, solo, I, and I think. You know, the actor uh, or the so character? The character. Really? Um, oh. Okay. And I mean, and the the actor right. itself. I mean, the actor itself. I don't really know um, too the much act- about. The actor would be one thing, um, but not like. Shut s- the fucking music off. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's bad mood, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a bad mood. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> you don't care for solo. All right. No. So, then if you don't care for solo, again. then I, I can see. What I don't blame said. you for I not going to see it. Saying, no, Listen, I, I mean, it's yeah. a character disagree. that you know you you didn't get a whole lot from even throughout the uh, throughout the original trilogy, and and now that other than the fact a, that he was the man, well, yeah, all the time. <laughs> but that was but that was at the you know except for when he was in carbonation. That was on the surface of things. You know, every all his actions were on the surface and and gave you that up front. So. You know, now you have the the story retelling everything, and um, and what is it? It's supposed to be like a heist movie or something like that. Uh, yeah, you start uh, It's, it's not hard to tell what exactly. It's, this so movie yeah, was. I mean that's that's probably the next part of this is that this movie really. And so to your point, you didn't want to go see it. You may have been okay with missing this. Um, yeah, I'm not I, gonna say I like you really. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't Rogue out One. On a good one. It wasn't Rogue One by any means. Right. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, la, so so la, I'll, la, if Luke, I get into this, so Luke, I am your father. <laughs> but also, uh, also, that wasn't in there. also these, you know, when you're telling me, Still you know, good. about a movie that's in theaters, like I want you to also tell me like why I should have seen this movie in theaters. We can't. So like <laughs> we can't. can't. I can only tell. Yeah. So the only. Re- oh man, like the effects were so great. Seeing on the big screen will be like you know the the best way to see this. Oh, only way. In hindsight, I can't tell you why you should have seen this movie. But prior to us seeing the movie, I could have told you that my expectations going into this movie was that. Seeing a spinoff like Rogue One really set a high bar, and mm-hmm. I was very, very excited that this would kind of meet that level. Understood. Um, going into it. Now, you haven't seen the movie, so if I had this conversation with you on Thursday morning, that would have been a conversation I would have had with you. Hindsight, I don't know if you missed it. Or I, don't, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you did or didn't miss anything, because I really have mixed thoughts about it. You missed this. Darth I, Maul reappearing, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> I, I can see where Bill's coming from, though, because um, there's a lot of people that, you know, have the same kind of thought process, like where Rogue One was about an event, where Solo was about a character specifically. Yeah. And if you're like like Bill, like he doesn't not a big fan of the character or whatever, which is fine. And then there's other people that love the character so much that they have what happened before maybe the movies as part of their imagination. They don't want that like changed or altered yeah. in any way. So I think that's another point that maybe takes away from the interest of it because they're like, well, I don't want to know that's stupid. You know, what I have in my head is right and everything else is wrong. Like, we don't need a figuring Don and the Modal Nodes prequel. Maybe, yeah. You know, right. the Cantina Band. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for for the three of us that did see it, let's... Uh, Let's get in some of the highs and lows of the movie. Sure. Uh, some of the things that I enjoyed uh, towards the beginning of the film, you know, when Han, uh, you know, had enlisted in the Imperial Army, uh, some of the action sequences in that were, you know, very reminiscent of Rogue One with the, mm-hmm. the action in there, the, you know, the you know the military type scenes, uh, where you just didn't have those types of scenes in either the original trilogy or the prequels to where it felt more gritty and grounded and more of a real life scenario. Yeah, I like that part of it. That yeah. I mean that stuff was really good. Uh everything with Chewbacca was really good. I thought he was done very well. Love Chewie. He yeah. was, you know, such a kick ass character. As he uh, should be. Yeah. Vicious and brutal. Right. Like, you know, when they first show him, he's mm-hmm. a prisoner in the Imperial uh prison there. And they're they're feeding the prisoners to him like he's <laughs> eating. There's skeletons everywhere. He's fucking eating these well, he's people. Hungry. And then yeah, throughout the movie, he's, you know, he's ripping people's arms off. I think in should, yeah. in my review that I posted up on the dot com, which is up right now, uh, I think I put something in there like he does his best Undertaker impression, and he like gives <laughs> some dude like a tombstone pile oh, yeah, driver. Yeah, like, he just fucking like yeah. suplexes this dude straight down on his skull, and it's pretty <laughs> fucking <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Chewie's the man. <laughs> uh, so everything with Chewbacca was really good. Um, I thought Alden Ehrenreich did a very nice job uh, portraying the character. I don't think he tried to, you know, he didn't emulate. Overdo it. No, he didn't overdo it. He didn't try to emulate or impersonate Harrison Ford in any way. But there were definitely times you could see, you know, the reflection of the character, you know, as Harrison Ford had done it compared to what we were getting on the screen, right. which was also very nice. I mean, when you're going to portray a character that's already been done on screen, especially as iconic as somebody like Han Solo, I mean, that's the way that you want to do it. Um, I do think that Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando Calrissian was a couple steps above what uh, Alden Ehrenreich did. Uh, yeah, what so. did you think about Lando? Yeah, I mean, Lando... Um... <laughs> Lando was fine, except for the writer coming out and making that. Lando's Lando's not a man. (laughs) Lando's a man, not a system. (laughs) Uh, Except for the writer coming out, you know, with unnecessary BS. Like, oh, he's pansexual or whatever the hell. Like, all right, dude. Like, no one needs to know that or care and and whatever. But as far as the, you know, the actor portrayal, yeah, it was good. I mean, he was charismatic. Um, You know, he had that little presence there. You you know, he was a shyster, you know, as you see in the card game. You know, that was that was pretty much everything that fans thought. Sabak. Yeah, Sabak. You know, I I like that. I mean, 
you know, um, there was really no complaints about Lando except his droid was terrible. Yeah. I hated his droid. L3, right? That L3. almost completely ruined the movie yeah, for it and, like, bad. kind of his emotional attachment to it. And they kind of hinted at other things, uh, which I'm just like, well, what the fuck? Like, it's completely unnecessary. Yeah. Why and that's... Are you stuck up half <laughs> scruffy looking nerd? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, other than that, yeah, the actor portrayal was pretty much a point. Mike, how did you feel about Han having a different love interest in uh, Amelia Clark's Kira than uh, Princess Leia? Like, was that weird for you seeing that? Because I know it was for it, me. I don't know if it was weird because you kind of like get the sense that Han closes ass deep down. <laughs> yeah, Han, Han, Han. Look, dude, like uh, uh, kicks names and takes ass. Yeah. Han is a <laughs> look. He's a heartthrob at the end of the day, right? I mean, like. So even in the, um, you know, episodes four, five, and six, the guy is totally just like, he's a badass, but deep down, he's this guy on the exterior that's a hustler. Um, he's a guy that you don't know if you can trust, but deep down, he does, like, you can tell he has a heart, and you see that layer of him in this film. Um, oh, so my. He's always going to have that, um, that, that sentimental bond with a female um, one way or another. Um, and, he, and I think he holds on to that attachment. Um, so you, obviously you see that with Leia. You know, you see that throughout the years with Leia. Um, I am not a fan of Amelia Clark at all, so it was a little rough for me to watch this because I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, and she's, like, to my opinion, the most annoying part of that show. Mm. Like, through and through, <laughs> the most annoying part of that show. Stop it! Um, <laughs> so that was a little tough for me to watch, but... Okay. As far as how it relates to Han and his character, no, it all made sense to me. You know, I mean, he he had a melee yet, so you know he's he's not gonna wait his whole life for Leia if he hasn't even met her, if he even knows he's gonna meet right. her, if he even though she exists. So it all, right. as far as his character is concerned, it definitely makes sense. No, they turned him into a deadbeat dad in seven. Yeah. So. Which is disappointing. Now, in terms of the plot of this movie, so at the onset, uh, you know, they get separated uh, on Corellia, and then he wants to enlist in the Imperial Army so he can become a pilot and eventually come back and save her. Uh, and then he winds up meeting her along the way, way before he planned on it. And then, you know, their relationship is kind of muddled. Because, you know, she's playing one angle. Uh, because she's you know, involved with uh, Paul Bettany's character, Dryden Voss. Uh, so she's kind of like underplaying things. And you know the rest of their relationship really becomes muddled throughout the rest of the movie. Um, you know, obviously, he's thinking you know, things are on one level when she's thinking they're not, when it was portrayed in another way in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but all, you know, other than that, like, there are like three, four, five different plot points to this movie that yeah. really for me took me out of the movie in a lot of ways because it was confusing you know where they were going from one point to the next uh from where they really started from uh mike what did you think about like the overall you know plot points and you know where the film ended up from where it started from um i found myself just getting too involved maybe not too involved but uh, like I was constantly just focused on what was going on in front of me, and it just seemed like every 20 minutes something different was happening, right. and I constantly got, like, it's one of those movies, like, and, you know, there's probably a couple of movies that do this to you, especially if you see it in a theater for the first time, that you're so enamored with everything that's going on, the chase, the, you know, the chase scenes, the action, the the dialogue between Han and Lando, for example, like the, you know, the hustle um, so focused on Han and you know how he's portraying himself that you get lost in the plot. And I think the movie did that on purpose. Like I think the movie just kind of wanted this to be like an action adventure so, ride. Pa it was, um, it's a dog and pony show, right? <laughs> Is that right? Uh, I don't know if it's exactly a dog and pony <laughs> show. To, to fully answer <laughs> the question, I could I I feel like I could never really identify what the plot was. Right. It, it started one place. It was it ever went, changing. It was a it was Star Cross Lovers. Then it went to a heist. Then it went to um, yeah, like, like a show. redemption yeah. kind of story. Yeah. Like yeah, s saving these uh, other you know quote unquote smugglers who were actually like a rebellion faction. And then right, there were so many right, twists yeah. and turns in the last. Uh, like half here's hour. one thing that bothered me with this with this you know rebellion. Fa I forget what they were called. They were like marauders, is yeah, what they called they were, them at first. The, but then they like called that. them something else. Yeah. Whatever they were called, like, their ultimate goal was to get... Uh, resources. For yeah, them. get the resources to start the rebellion. Mm -hmm. So 
at that onset, when they first encountered uh, Han and Beckett and everybody, you know, when they were on the train sequence, mm -hmm. uh, why did they wind up killing these people when they, ultimately they wanted to work well, with well, them or help them? Well, you know, because, like, Beckett's gang was doing it for sale. You know, they but, were like, couldn't you have, like, sell at least where... put that, you know, the dialogue out like, we aren't trying to kill you. We need this yeah, because yeah. of no, this. I, mean, I, I get, I get that part of it, but <laughs> and I then mean, ultimately you wind up working with these people. Yeah, eventually. And like, like, be, like Woody Harrelson's Beckett character, like he, his, you know, love interest gets killed. His best friend gets killed, yeah. and he doesn't even give a shit about it. Well, well you find out that he's a cold-hearted. Yeah, he's a scumbag. Though. But yeah. like, they already set the seeds, uh, mm -hmm. like planted the seeds that like. He loved her, and that, like that was his boy. But like, you didn't. <laughs> he loved her. That was his boy. You didn't feel that. Like, <laughs> you didn't feel that. I know when what they you mean. Yeah, like, I know it what just. Mean. It was very uneven in terms of you know what they set up and then how they delivered <laughs> through it. Um, yeah, the whole thing with that is that you know, I mean, obviously Solo's crew and Beckett's crew were, were getting stealing the stuff to sell for profit, where the Marauders group. They made it look like, okay, this is just another group that's trying to steal our stuff. But in reality, they're trying to actually use the stuff for good yeah, to start a rebellion. Phase, so, phase I mean, one, steal underpants. I, I mean, phase two. Yeah, I mean, I get that part of it. So, I mean, it was Phase three, profit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just how I look at that scenario. But uh, Well, anything else in the movie that would kind of bothered you or just didn't quite and all, add up to what you know? In all honesty, I don't like the way that Han and Chewie met. No. Like, I thought it was uh, kind of dumb. Okay. Like that. Why so? So, they, in the movie, like, they, they, like we said, they meet up. Uh, Chewie's being, you know, held as a, a beast which in I a thought was, imperial prison. Which I thought was, like, you know, okay, cool, great. Oh, they're going to meet this way. And then they start, like, fighting. He's trying to kill him. But then, like, Han, like, growls. Like, he starts trying to fucking Yeah, speak. he, like, growls. And Chewie's just like, huh? I'm like, Like, no. at what point in like, do any that. of the other movies does Han know how to speak like a Never. Woman? Never. No, never. Like, I mean, he can he, acknowledge he flat what out says, speaks, like, I understand and, what you're saying. Yeah, he's like, I know little or yeah, something. I but mean, Chewie understands yeah, the basic uh, speaks, language. Yeah, and he Han speaks, speaks regularly. His own like, why did he language? And I thought that was kind of like, all right. This is where we're going to start debating on the syntax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I just thought that part was kind of like, all right. I mean, that's. I really wish there was a better way that that was right. developed. Yeah. And like maybe it was, it was unneeded. Life, like, it got know? it got some laughs out of the audience. I had a fucking lady sitting oh, next to me who was laughing at every stupid See, little thing. That. Not as bad as. Yeah, the no, clap that person from friggin', Infinity War. That friggin' guy. Um, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, that was really... And the droid, I hate Lando's Yeah, droid. the droid was pretty bad. Awful. I mean, I, there, there were definitely... Get, um, I'll throw it back to you, Mike. Yeah. One thing I liked, um, one, one, you know, high uh, on a high note takeaway was, uh, you know, Lando and Han's relationship. You know, um, you know, right off the bat, they're, they're rivals at a card game. You know, and then there are two guys that r you can tell they have a very, very mutual respect for each other as far as the hustle is concerned. Um, and at the same time, it's like a fierce rivalry, too. So it's like it's almost I don't want to say love hate relationship. Um, I don't even want to say friends. I want to say frenemies that, that mutual, <laughs> mutual admiration. And they really did a good job of kind of like starting that origin there um, to see where it takes. And, it, you know, their relationship, like you were saying, it played out over the course of the film, too. Like at the end where, uh, you know, the end, I guess you can call it a battle is going, you know, taking place. And then, you know, Lando winds up taking off in the Falcon, leaving yeah. them stranded. Bail. Uh, and then that harkens back to, you know, the original trilogy when he, you know, he betrays. Uh, Han as well, and that also echoes a lot of the the dialogue from uh, Beckett's character. And, you, know, you can't rely on other people. Right. You know, they're right. always going to you know disappoint you in the end or whatever he says, I, uh, which did come true. I wish they would have made that a different type of moment instead of like a humorous moment when Lando left. Like it was just kind of like. You know, Han's like, well, you're going to have a bunch of guns come yeah, out of the ship. we got 30 hired yeah, guns 30 in the hired hired ship guns. and then yeah. Yeah, right out. Right. And it just ended up being like a laugh moment. Right. I wish it would have been more like a, like you would have had Lando kind of turning a corner. <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, yeah that's funny. It would have been better if you would have had Lando kind of turn a corner and almost kind of, and because the best thing about Han and Lando on the same screen is that you don't know what to expect from either character as far as, 
where their loyalties are concerned. So it would have right. been cool to kind of see Lando have turn a corner on the loyalty perspective, ultimately just to say, see you later, you know. Um, yeah. And that would have really tied into what you're used to seeing from Lando in the uh, episodes four, uh, well, specifically five, so. Now, uh, we previously uh, previously spoke on the character of Akira. You know, she was a little wishy-washy throughout the entirety of the film. Uh, but at the end, uh, spoiler alert if you're still listening and you have not seen this movie yet, uh, after, you know, the events of, you know, the final battle take place, uh, she winds up leaving Han and Chewie behind, taking off in... Uh, you know, Paul Bettany's character's uh, yacht, ship, yacht, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And she contacts somebody that is involved with the Crimson Dawn uh, crime syndicate that she's a part of, mm -hmm. uh, which turns out to be Darth Maul. Uh, so Darth Maul. understanding just where this film fits into the Star Wars timeline uh, can be you know something really beneficial uh mike when we got out of the movie like i know you were unsure of y that darth maul was still alive you know based on things so, like the comics and correct. some of the so cartoon I watch, series i watch the movies i don't dive deep right. um the general pat my tag team partner dives very deep into this stuff hey, but hey. he's a deep dive. i <laughs> i walked out of the movie <laughs> and i'm like deep. well how to how the hell does Darth Maul make sense? All right. So he's in this movie. A lot of people share that as well. Right. So he's in this movie. And, you know, the last time we saw Darth Maul, he got killed. And when he got killed, yeah, cut Darth Vader was a child. And Obi-Wan was probably younger than Han in this movie. Like, you know, so it didn't make sense, the timeline. And then I would say they're Han more, in this you know, movie and Obi-Wan were probably around the same age. Yeah. All right. Nonetheless, though, early 20s, early mid 20s. How yeah. you know? I walk out of this movie thinking, how the hell does Darth Maul figure into this timeline? Um, so I was very puzzled by it without actually mm -hmm. doing some research. Right. Yeah, he comes back. He's got the the spider bottom of the body going on. You see it. In, but, uh, yeah, this one the Clone the Wars. Like, yeah, Clone Wars. Now it was uh, it was tough to pick that out because when he was sitting there, I don't know if it was just a hologram, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't look like he had any kind of spider robot legs no i think he just had like regular like mechanical legs yeah I, it, was, it, it was harder it for me like. to decipher that way um but he does reappear uh, i believe this film takes place 10 years before the onset of a new hope um so obviously so, yeah. uh you know a after the prequel trilogy you know in canon uh darth maul is still alive um for all intents and purposes for the end of the movie i think it could either set up a direct sequel to uh this movie or either a uh obi-wan right uh, spinoff where because uh, like pat you and i both watched some of the uh yeah, yeah, the so clone that's his, wars that's his end game that's what kept yeah. him alive is he, his he, he for wants to kill obi-wan yeah. for you know what he did to him mm -hmm. and, you know that revenge factor uh, and at the end of the movie, Han and Chewie are heading to Tatooine, right. which we know is where Jabba, you know, Jabba is, obviously, <laughs> and where uh, Obi Wan is, you know, at at the onset yeah. of the mm -hmm. original trilogy. Correct. Uh, so, I mean, they could maybe pull double duty and have a movie where you see Han traveling to Tatooine, and you still have you know the final duel between. Obi Wan and Darth Maul at the same time. Yeah, I would like to see that, but that that played out in uh, Star Wars Rebels, the actual duel with him. Right, but at the same and time, I, you got to think that on screen. Yeah, ninety five percent of the you know the movie going audience haven't Cor seen that. Correct. So. But then you know Star Wars fans being Star Wars fans, they'll be like, "Well, you just destroyed the canon. You just replaced the." But at the same time, they already it. have because it's like what the hell? Like Darth Maul yeah. still appeared in Star Wars Rebels too. Yeah. Which which takes place kind of like around the same time as this leading up but it's, to like that kind of negates everything that's going on. I in hope the it movie does. Too, yeah. So I wish Rebels would be completely. Uh, just yeah, as we're wrapping up this review, uh, quick score out of ten, Mike. What would you give it? Six point eight. I'm around there. Yeah, I'm around a six. Yeah. yeah, six. Yeah, six point five. Yeah, there was it was a fun movie, good. right? So I mean, like regardless yeah, were, of maybe were, some of the plot points missing, yeah. um, you know, for a guy that really had big fills or excuse me big shoes to fill um he didn't try to overdo it he didn't try to overact right so i give him a lot of credit there where a lot of people will just say he's not harrison ford so screw him i give him credit 
Um, and yeah. the, the movie was fun to watch. So with that in consideration, uh, uh, um, yeah. I would say you know I think more is- more of our negative comments have to do with the you know the script and the writing and the plot points more yeah. than the acting and everything else that goes better than episode it. one, better than episode two. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you know for me it's falling in that range kind of on the edge of like revenge of the sith and right. Right, jedi and so forth so uh and while we i guess we still have a couple minutes here. uh bill <laughs> deadpool 2 back in the conversation uh me and you saw it a week before the film's theatrical release date yeah. uh and then you fell asleep in the theater apparently the <laughs> next time you, you saw did. it I wasn't there. Uh, what did yep. you think about Deadpool 2 the second time, Bill? Uh, it was great. I <laughs> liked it uh, better than the first one um, in most regards. Um, yeah, it just hit all points. It was great comedy, uh, action, story moved along all right, and yeah. Now, we had a little bit of an issue when we had arrived at the theater I forget what theater it was down on. Uh, uh, it was the Ritz. The down Ritz, in yeah, Old the Ritz City. East. An old, an city, old city, right there. Well, are you talking about the snafu with the seats? Yeah. So we go in, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I go up to the yeah you know, the lady at the the little podium there. I'm like, yeah, we're here with you know the the company that sent me the tickets and all. Blah blah blah. We're here. Press, press, yeah, press. So you got to go press. They're like, like oh, well, range. well, I don't know if there's any seats left. Somebody's gonna have to find some for you. So we go in. This lady's oh, like, scared. yeah, we gotta find any seats. I think there might be one in this row here, and then one back there. So right uh, at the front yeah. of the door, there's four seats, the very first four seats in the row that we're walking into. So we're like, all right, well, we're just going to sit down here. So some dude comes over and he's like, wow, I-, I need these four seats. I got other people coming in. I'm like, well, screw you. <laughs> I'm like, well, we need two of them. <laughs> so he, yeah. come, he comes back like I get in the very like after the, the trailers that are already played. And he's like looking for these seats, and all the two other people had sat down too. And he's like, he just goes off and looks. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck you, guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're here, man. I need these. Well, no, yeah, I need them deal, too, pal. Um, but you guys saw it the week after. Uh, let's get your impressions first, Pat. What did you think about Deadpool too? Yeah, I mean, I, I I enjoyed it. I know it's a Deadpool movie. It's all over the place. I, I like the comedy in it. It's supposed to be comedy. Um, just for me, I thought the first one was a little smoother as far as the uh, storytelling, but um, there was a lot of improv lines in this that you can just tell, and I thought some of them fell a little flat and were a little awkward as to the whole story. But Maybe on the more forced side, are you saying? Yeah, I mean, just like a little, in? yeah, just a little too improv. Okay. You, you can, and it was very obvious, but right. That's a minor complaint. I mean, the Deadpool movies are really just for entertainment value, and yeah, if you leave there feeling entertained, which I was, then you know, I I enjoyed it. So, not looking to build anything bigger off that. Then okay, cool. Go Mike, see regarding the overall plot, what say you? I mean, the plot. The plot is Deadpool has a um a recent purpose because uh the love of his life gets killed and he wants to Spoiler channel alert. that energy into saving somebody um the <laughs> kid that is imprisoned in uh, <laughs> uh at the Essex school um so yeah, I mean, Mr. Sinister uh, Yeah, I mean I I, I would love to actually yeah, you see more and more of that but you don't see Mr. Yeah, Sinister. Two movies is referencing and doesn't um, show up. Yeah, so that's disappointing, look the plot is basically a it's filler compared to what they're really trying to do is yeah, just throw stage the, comedy and violence at you right absolutely so as far as the plot's concerned sure it gives you a course it allows this sketch comedy and all this violence to run its course to ultimately come to to its end right so the plot to me it was irrelevant what the plot would be absolutely. i mean this kid pretty much had nothing to do with anything even trying to save him except because for the of the end there's the, the time travel and he yeah, negates exactly. everything exactly anyway, like it, right? it brings it brings like an arc to cable right it brings that in which was cool and cable was awesome um, i hope you get something down the line i if they stick with it with everything going on you get hope summers in there sure. get the name drop that'd be pretty cool uh, and obviously you want to see cable come back again yeah, Josh Brolin did a really great job it as Cable. Pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, but I mean, yeah, in terms great. of what the actual movie is about, 
it, it doesn't matter what the movie. It doesn't it does, matter. What it the does movie not is matter because, like you're saying, it's it's the slapstick, it's the action, it's the comedy, it's everything that goes along with it during you know the onset of the film. And I'm totally okay with that. And I don't like need if this you, to, like I said like yeah. I think I texted it to you guys like if you're I going, don't need to overthink this. If you're going yeah. into this movie like expecting a plot line along the lines yeah. of Infinity War or something, like, yeah, it's just not you're happening. in yeah. the wrong theater. Uh-huh. It's about Cutting off heads, making dick jokes, and then seeing some cool <laughs> shit happen along the way, which you know for this franchise is totally fine, and you know, that's what you signed up for. Yeah. Um, I, I got to tell you, I liked it better than the first one, just because the first one, you know, the first one's obviously going to have an origin story, yeah. right? And it's absolutely necessary to have an origin story, but it almost takes away a little bit from some of what I want to see. Yeah. So now that, that you, you know, know the character, like you can now you can give me more of up. that fun stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to get look the point. Like any origin story has its low moments, and yeah. I didn't have to deal with any of that in this movie. So I do. I definitely prefer this movie to Deadpool One. Um, I definitely thought it was funnier, and um, yeah. I don't know. It was probably on the same level of violent, probably, but. Um, it was definitely funnier, and there were a couple of moments in this movie that I, I was laughing while I was going into the next scene, still laughing at the at the scene that yeah, happened. Yeah, this is right one that you're going to need to see multiple times to catch all the jokes. Uh, and you can also check out our review of that movie over on thecinescape.com. Uh, and that is going to do it for us on this Memorial Day Saturday. Thank you guys for checking out the episode. Make sure you subscribe to all of our social media feeds, our YouTube channel, our iTunes feed, all that good stuff for myself, Sean Harrigan, Bill Tazi, Mike Chrisman, Pat Mahoney, yeah. and Jamie over there behind the boards. We wanted to thank you and uh, have a great weekend, everybody.